This is an electric blue day gecko, the world's bluest reptile. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to take care of one. So grab a pen and paper and take down some notes. I promise it'll stick up here much better. Is that why you fail college, bro? Shut up, Funko. So a couple quick facts real quick. So the electric blue day gecko is a critically endangered animal that lives within Tanzania, Africa. And there are microdorf species of geckos that only gets up to 3.5 inches long. Are you talking about the microdorf gecko between your legs? Now there is some sexual dimorphism with this species. As the males, they're the pretty ones that get that nice, deep, rich electric blue, while the females, they're a little more dull in color, but they have that little bit of blue tint to it. Now there's a couple ways to visually sex this gecko. One is to wait till they get their colors. Usually the males will start gaining their colors as around like six to 10 months, sometimes a year. And then the other way is to look under them and right before the anal, you'll see some femoral pores that will shape like a V. The males will have a really prominent femoral pores compared to the females. But honestly, a lot of people say this isn't always a reliable way to sex them. All right, let's get a habitat set up for these guys. So there's a couple of different cages you can use for these guys. There's exoterras or leap habitats. And leap habitats is what I totally recommend for these guys. This is what I use. Now, exoterra is more readily available, but the issue with that cage is, is that there's a lot of little portholes for let's say like a thermostat probe or any electricals. So when you first get your juvenile electric blue day gecko baby, they can actually creep out through these holes. So you would have to do some modification of the cage, like silicone it to the side. And it's just honestly a lot more of a pain to deal with. So that's another reason why I prefer these over that. And plus, these cages right here are just a lot lighter. Now for actual cage sizes, I would recommend for an adult pair is for a leap habitat, 18 inches deep, 15 inches wide, and 18 inches tall. And for the Exoterra brand for a pair of adults, 18 by 18 by 18 cube. And for actually setting up your enclosure for these guys, I would say you wanna keep in a bioactive setup. I would actually say it's more essential than anything. You'll have your drainage layer, your soil, your plants and your sticks and bamboo sticks for them to all climb around. But we'll go one thing at a time. So with the bamboo sticks right here, this is gonna be like their little basking and perching areas. You're gonna want them to have them at a horizontal plane. And I would say you are gonna want a couple of them going from left to right in the enclosure. You're gonna want one a little bit under the basking site and then one a little bit closer to the front of the cage. I would say keep one higher and one lower than the other as it just gives them a lot more climbing spaces around. I'm gonna say the bamboo sticks that's gonna be under the basking site be the higher one and then one a little bit lower. This will give you more chances to view them around and stuff like that. And now for actual vertical branches, you can actually pick some of these up at your actual like on the forest floor or something like that. But you're gonna wanna bake them in the oven at 250 degrees for like 25 to 30 minutes as this will actually get rid of all the pests that can contaminate your cage. So make sure to bake it if you do it that way. And for plants, you know, a lot of people will actually use snake plants, but I prefer this little cute little palm plant in here. It's called Neothen palm plant. I think I pronounced it right. But yeah, you can usually find this at like Home Depot or Lowe's for like five, 10 bucks. And this is the plant I really recommend because it actually is strong enough to hold their little body weight, even as adults. And they can actually drink off it. And the best part, it looks good and gives them tons of foliage. So seriously, this is my go-to plant for these guys. And there's a couple of reasons why I think it's essential to keep these guys in a bioactive setup. One, the substrate, it'll help hold in the humidity inside the enclosure a lot better. It's good for shedding. And two, these geckos are like poop on the walls, on the front of the glass and on the sticks and any poop that does fall down onto the substrate, the cleanup crew in the bioactive setup will actually help break it down and it'll give nutrients to the plants. And when it comes to the other poop that you'll find throughout the enclosure, just knock it off, wipe it down, let it hit the floor and it'll take care of itself. All right, now let's talk about heating and lighting for these geckos. And real quick guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, I actually do not provide a basking bulb for these guys. Instead, what I do is I actually use the UVB light fixture to use as a basking site as the UVB will actually produce a little bit of heat. And how I do this is I place a UVB fixture right on top of the basking site and with the bamboo stick, I place it about two inches below the UVB source. And since it produces a little bit of heat, I will get a temperature ranges usually of 85 to 95 degrees throughout the day. And from my observation, I really noticed these geckos really seem to like it right about 90 degrees at the sweet spot. And you know, this is actually gonna gradually come up and go back down throughout the day, just like how it naturally does in the wild. And guys, even if it gets up to like 100 degrees at the basking site, it's totally fine. As long as they have a gradient of somewhere else in the enclosure to go to, to cool down, 
you're good to go. And what I actually use to measure the temperature of the basking site is just a simple temperature gun. You can get these off of like Amazon for like 10 bucks. I'll leave links down in the description to all the products I talk about in this video down in the description. And for the UVB light fixtures that I recommend, I recommend a T5HO Reptisun 10.0 from ZooMed or the Arcadia 6%. And out of the two brands, I personally like Arcadia better. Now I do wanna say though that the UVB bulbs, they don't last forever. They're only really good about 10 to 12 months. So when you install your bulb, make sure to put an install sticker onto it. And whatever date you put that in, just change it out a year from that. And for just additional lighting for aesthetics, I actually use a Night Crew LED light. I really like this. This is what I use on all my bioactive setup as it grows my plants and all that stuff really nice. And thanks to the different colors into it, it'll actually make my electric blue day geckos colors just really pop. And trust me, you really want all this nice extra light. I mean, look how beautiful this animal is. Again, links in the description. And for your light cycle period, you're gonna wanna have your lights on for 12 hours during the day and 12 hours off during the night. And you do not wanna have any additional light at all during the night because these guys are sensitive to light. And if you keep them up during the night like that, you're gonna really stress them out. Oh, and for nighttime temps, just keep it at room temperature and they'll be completely fine, I promise you. Now let's talk about cohabitation with these geckos. I wanna say this right now, guys, you cannot cohabitate more than one male in one enclosure. Like they are very territorial and they will try to kill each other. So if you try to do it, you can expect one dead. And when it comes to the females, you know, I have kept these guys in like trios, like two females and one male. You can do it short term, but I figured out in the long term, females will actually start fighting and stuff. So I really only recommend keeping these guys in pairs. And when I say pairs, I mean one male and one female. So. Only keep them in pair, guys. All right, let's talk about water and humidity for these geckos. So how these geckos get hydration is that they actually don't recognize still puddles of water, so a water dish won't work for them. What you're gonna wanna actually do is, you're actually gonna wanna spray these guys twice a day as they actually only recognize dew drops. So you're gonna wanna mist them first thing in the morning and 30 minutes before lights out. These guys will all drink off the bamboo sticks, the little palm plants, the walls, so it's actually really easy to do that. And when it comes to misting them, you don't want to get it super soaker style and make everything like a swamp. You just want to lightly mist these guys. Remember, these guys are small, so they don't need it to be like a major rainfall. And plus, you get them sick if you did it like that. And this is kind of how you keep humidity up too, is just by the misting. And for the actual humidity, you know, there's no really magic number for the proper humidity, but I would say about 70% seems to be a really good sweet spot for them throughout the midday. And like I said, keeping a bioactive set will really help maintain that humidity. And now if your humidity goes up really high in the morning or at night, that's totally okay. That's how nature works. Humidity is always really high during the morning and during the night. And then it goes back down during the midday when the sun's out. So remember with humidity, it's not like keeping a frog guys. It's okay to have fluctuations throughout the day with these guys. All right, now let's talk about the diet for these geckos. So I like to feed them a mixture of insects and Pangea gecko diet. And for insects, I really just mainly feed them fruit flies, but you can also use bean beetles. And then I also give them a mixture of different flavors of Pangea gecko diet. They seem to really love the bug mixture and the watermelon flavor a lot for me. And when you're using the Pangea gecko diet, you could just put it on a little gecko feeder dish, or you could put a little bit on the bamboo stick and they'll just freaking eat it up. And it's just so much fun to watch them eat. And when it comes to actually the feeding schedule of these geckos, you only want to feed them about four to five times a week. They're opportunistic eaters in the wild, so they'll eat whenever they can, so they'll always appear hungry. And if you overfeed them, they'll get obese and it's not good for the health, blah, 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 you know. And now let's talk about supplementation for these geckos. I do use Rapashi's Calcium Plus. I'll honestly use this only about once a week on their fruit flies because their gecko powder diet, it does have like some vitamins in it, like vitamin D3 and vitamin A and stuff like that. So you don't really need to use uh, too much supplementation with them for that. But I do want to mention that there is a big problem with geckos getting too much like supplementation to them. And if they get too much, let's say like calcium powder, they'll start developing these sacs around their actual throat. And that's actually really unhealthy for the geckos. So you don't want to feed them only strictly Pangea. You want to do a mixture of both. Honestly, I would say 50-50 between bugs and Pangea. And don't overfeed them because that's another way they can get that calcium sacs. 
But for the females, I do want to say that there is a tendency for them to have a calcium crash while they're breeding because they're not getting enough calcium. So what you can do to prevent this is if you are breeding them, just put some normal calcium powder on top of a little lid of a water bottle and just set them at the bottom of the enclosure. And the female will know when she needs calcium. So whenever she needs it, she'll go back down there and just look a little bit up. And when it comes to handleability for these geckos, I'm going to be honest with you guys. They're only strictly a display pet, dude. They're so freaking fast, dude. Like if they escape, dude, it is hard to catch them. But I'll actually give you a tip on how to catch them. But real quick, I just wanna say thank you really quick to the Patreon and channel members. You guys really help support this channel and help me keep going on animal education. And if you guys are ever interested in supporting this channel, you can become a member for what, as little as $1 a month and get your name on the end screens. Okay, let's get back to the video. And the tip that I was gonna give you guys on how to catch them when they escape is, I'll use Funko as a demonstration on this wall. So these geckos will usually climb up high and they'll usually go on the wall. And when that happens, you wanna either grab a clear glass or a deli cup and you go directly above them and then just try to capture them directly like this, just flat on the wall. And I swear, for some reason, they just don't really recognize the glass. So it's really easy to catch them this way. Once you do that, wait till they move to the bottom of the glass. And then once they get in there, Grab them and throw them right back in the enclosure. That is how I always catch them. I swear it works miracles. And when it comes to the personality of these animals, man, they got they got a lot of it. Like, dude, every time I walk by the enclosure, they'll just like peek their head at me and just like look at me like a really curious like little pigeon or something like that. They're always active, jumping around everywhere, and they're just kind of dweeby. And that's what I really love. Like, out of all the animals in my office. When I need a break from the computer, I'll always look at the electric blue day geckos because they're always moving and shaking about in their enclosure. So even though they're not Hannibal, they're really fun to watch. And for the last section of this care guide, is this the right pet for you? Well, it depends what you really want. If you're looking for something to handle, you can forget that. But if you really want a beautiful display animal and to have the bluest reptile on earth as one of your pets, then this is the perfect pet for you. And they're really cheap and easy maintenance as long as you have all the equipment and set up right. And if you guys are ever interested in buying one of these animals, I do breed these geckos. So feel free to contact me or go to my website and I may just have one just for you. All right guys, my name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphing Reptiles. Peace.